morning, everyone, and welcome as we celebrate this Palm Sunday. We are so glad that you have joined us today, and I hope you are um, doing very well. Here we are on this third week, third Sunday of this stay in at home, and by now some of you are probably um, tired of this. Those of you who have kids, you're probably ready to pull your hair out. You're ready for them to go back to school. Um, some of you are frustrated. Some of you are at home alone and don't get any visitors and you're talking to the refrigerator and the toaster and all those things and you're about to go nuts. And let's just pull ourselves all together today. Pull yourselves around the television set, around a telephone, a computer, uh, your tablet, and let's just have a great time of worship as we praise and glorify God on this Palm Sunday. Uh, let's have a word of prayer as we prepare to worship. Dear Heavenly Father, we want to thank you today. We want to give you praise for how you are always with us. Even during these difficult days, it is great just to wake up each morning and know that you're the one who gave us a brand new day and that you're the one who we depend on. You're the one who has provided our homes a shelter for us. You're the one that has um, given us a bed to sleep in, clothes to wear, food to eat. And so, Lord, we give you praise and thank you. And so we come into this place knowing that you are here with us. And we gather in our living rooms today knowing that you are with us. Or perhaps it's a bedroom or some other room in the house. But you are there. You said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. I am with you always, even until the very end of the age. And so, Lord, today we come together wherever we're at as one voice as one church and we lift our voices together to you through our songs and through our prayer and through the reading and preaching of your word and we pray dear lord today that you would be blessed by the worship of your children in jesus name we pray amen Oh, 
For the last few weeks, we have been talking about salvation's plan. And throughout this series, we have been going through the Old Testament, looking at prophecies and Old Testament scripture that tells us about the crucifixion and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Uh, in these different prophecies and foreshadowings, we also see where it was prophesied that um, Jesus was going to come into Jerusalem on a donkey um, in, on Palm Sunday. And today we want to look at that scripture as we celebrate this Palm Sunday. Zechariah, <clears throat> the ninth chapter, and verse 9. The prophet says, Rejoice greatly, daughter Zion. Shout, daughter Jerusalem. See, your king comes to you righteous and victorious, lowly and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. Then I want us to jump many years later, many, many years later, to Matthew chapter 21 and beginning with verse 1 and as they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethphage on the Mount of Olives Jesus sent two disciples saying to them go to the village ahead of you and at once you will find a donkey tied there with her colt by her untie them and bring them to me if anyone says anything to you, say that the Lord needs them, and he will send them right away. This took place to fulfill what was spoken through the prophet. Say to daughter Zion, see your king comes to you gentle and riding on a donkey, and on a colt, the foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus had instructed them. They brought the donkey and the colt and placed their cloaks on them for Jesus to sit on. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road while others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him and those that followed shouted, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heaven. When Jesus entered Jerusalem, the whole city was stirred and asked, Who is this? The crowds answered, This is Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth. Many years ago, when I was just a young boy, my family and I took a trip into Holland, Michigan. That day, they were celebrating what was known as the Tulip Festival. And in that parade that day was going to be a very special guest. It was the President of the United States, President Gerald Ford. And I remember as we watched float after float go by, and then you saw flashing lights way down at the end of the parade route. And I remember being so excited and waiting for the president to come. And I remember children gathering alongside the road and the, as the president got closer, you could hear the crowd getting louder and louder and the cheers were getting louder and some of the children were running into the street and you could see them looking down the street and saying, here he comes, here he comes, he's coming, the president's coming, the president's coming. Now I remember standing there, I had people standing in front of me and I was just a boy and I'm standing on my tiptoes and I'm trying to get myself through the crowd so I could see the president of the United States. And I remember when his limo pulled right up in front and it paused and there was a secret service man trying to 
hold everybody back. And I remember raising my hand and waving it as fast as I can and as hard as I could. I just waved my hand and I said hi to him and he didn't know I was there. But I got so excited just to see the President of the United States. And I wonder what it must have been that day when Jesus and his disciples decided that this was the day that they were going to enter into Jerusalem so that they could celebrate the Passover together. And word quickly got out. In fact, in John chapter 12, it records this same account. And in John's account, it says that the crowds that were there was because when Jesus raised Lazarus from the dead, the crowd that was present on the day that he was raised, they were so excited and so thrilled about what Jesus did that they began to spread the news to everyone around that Jesus had raised Lazarus from the dead. And when they found out that he was going to be entering into Jerusalem on this particular day, the word began to spread. The road into Jerusalem was lined with people of all different backgrounds. You had people that was on the lowest of the socioeconomic scale all the way up to the highest. You had people there that had been sick and diseased. You had people that were healed, that had been healed by Jesus, that had been touched by Jesus. There were probably people there for the first time along that road. They had heard about Jesus and that he was the promised Messiah, that he was the king who was going to come. And some of them may have even had ailments that day and was hoping that Jesus would somehow just touch them. I can only imagine all the different people that must have been there that day. And during that time, they were under Roman oppression. They were hoping for a king, a leader, someone who was going to deliver them out of this oppression. They were looking not for a savior, not for someone who would deliver them from sin. They were looking for someone who would deliver them from this oppression that they were under. And so as they gathered that day, they began to throw off their coats and down at his feet. And some who didn't have an outer garment, they began to pluck off branches, palm branches off the trees, and they began to throw them down as he came in on this donkey. Now during that time, the throwing off of the coat was out of respect for a king. And in 2 Kings, we see that God made Jehu the king of Israel. And when he became king, when he announced that Elijah had sent, Elisha had sent forth a prophet and this prophet had come to him and told him that he was going to be king. All of a sudden, the people went up and praised for Jehu and they took off their outer garments and they threw them down at his feet because he was king. And on that day, as Jesus passed by, all of these folks were recognizing Jesus as king, as king of Israel. And as they got excited and as they were thrilled, they began to raise their voices and they began to say, Hosanna, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heavens. Now maybe some of you are wondering today, what does that word Hosanna mean? Why were they shouting Hosanna? Why were they shouting this in praise 
of Jesus. And over in the Old Testament, the Hebrew meaning of the word Hosanna means save us or deliverance. It was more of something that was deeply heartfelt that they would cry out, Lord, save us in a time of trouble for deliverance. But on this day, it was different. Here in this New Testament setting, in the setting of Jesus entering into Jerusalem, it was not just save us. It, it was triumphant. They were glad that he was there. They shouted out, Hosanna. Hosanna to God in the highest. Which equals this. Praise God and Messiah. We are saved. That they didn't realize what they were truly being saved from. That they thought that they were just being saved from the oppression. That he was going to be the king, the new king that would take over. But little did they realize that over the next few days, as they all gathered into Jerusalem for the Passover, that, that this man, that they was certain was the Messiah. Certain that he was the chosen one of God. Certain that he would be king and take over the throne of David. Little did they realize that their king was going to become the sacrificial lamb during the Passover. A lamb that would take away all the sins of the world, the, the lamb who would be sacrificed once and for all, that no other lambs would have to be sacrificed for the remission of man's sin, that once and for all Jesus would be sacrificed for them. Little did they realize that that was going to happen during that week. And so they praised him, so excited about his coming. And gathered in that crowd that day it was not only people who were probably touched and healed by Jesus. But there were children there that day. Maybe some of these children were some of those children that Jesus had seen in the masses. And he said, suffer the little children to come unto me for such is the kingdom of heaven. These were children that perhaps he had sat on his knee. Children he had wrapped his arms around and embraced. In fact, these children were so excited about Jesus coming and hearing all of the adults shouting, Hosanna, Hosanna, that when they finally entered into Jerusalem and they gathered into the temple courts, the children continued to shout in the temple courts, Hosanna to the son of David. And the chief priests were incredibly upset. And they said, do you hear what these children are saying? Yes, replied Jesus. Have you never read from the lips of children and infants? Lord, you have called forth your praise. Uh, there were Pharisees there that day hearing all of the adults shouting Hosanna, Hosanna and in John, John records that when they were shouting Hosanna the Pharisees said Jesus rebuke your disciples and Jesus said if they do not praise me, even the rocks will cry out. I wonder how uh, these people all gathered there that day. Well, we know that some had heard because Lazarus had been raised from the dead and the word 
spread around that Jesus was coming. But perhaps they had heard from a loved one and maybe they had heard from a friend. And they were all coming that day to welcome him. This was Jesus' coronation day. The coronation that he was the king. Not just king of the Jews. He was the king. The king of kings and lord of lords. And I wonder what was going through each of their minds as Jesus entered in. You see, they were told, perhaps some of them days ago, some maybe hours before, maybe some even minutes, but they wanted to be sure that they were ready. And when they got there, they wanted to make sure that Jesus had this incredible welcome. And that's why they began to take off their outer garments. And that's why they began to take off the palm branches and begin to throw them down at Jesus' feet. And for years, they had probably passed on from generation to generation this prophecy from Zechariah. Behold Zion, behold daughter of Jerusalem, here comes your king, riding on a donkey, a colt, the foal of a donkey. And when they saw Jesus that day, those words must have rushed through their heads. As they shouted out that day, they said, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. In Psalm 118 and verse 25, it says, Lord, save us. Or as we know it, the word Hosanna. Lord, grant us success. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. And what is so fascinating about this passage in Psalm is that this passage was always read by the children of Israel each time at the Passover dinner. And so as they began to shout, to Jesus. They were reciting that passage, that scripture out of song, praising him and welcoming him into their city. Little did they know that Jesus was going to die. You and I know because we have come after the fact. We have read the scriptures and we know what happens. We know what happens near the end of that week of Passover, the week that we know as the Holy Week. We know what happens, but they don't. But because we know what happens, we also know that not only did Jesus die on the cross, not only did he become the sacrificial lamb that was going to take away all the sins of the world, your sins or my sins, but Jesus did not only die, but he rose again. And that's why we will celebrate next Sunday as Easter Sunday. But every Sunday that we gather to worship, every Sunday is Resurrection Sunday. Every Sunday is a day worth celebrating because Jesus is alive. Not only is he alive, but he's alive and well. He is sitting at the right hand of the Father where he intercedes for you and me to this very day. Jesus is alive. But we also know that not only did he die on the cross, not only did he raise from the dead, but then later he ascended to his Father in heaven. And as his disciples stood there that day, and Jesus was being taken up among the clouds, a man in white raiment said, This Jesus, this same Jesus, 
that you see rising into the sky, this same Jesus will come again in like manner as you have seen him go. And so today we as believers in Christ Jesus, those of us who have received and accepted by faith that Jesus was the Christ, the Son of the living God. He was not a political king, but he was the King of kings. He was a deliverer. And not only did he, was he sent here to deliver man, not from a political standpoint, but he was here to deliver man from his sins. You see, we don't have to worry about politics or the law because when Jesus died, there was no need for the law as we knew it. Jesus transformed the lives. He transformed the law. And he is alive and living today. And he is alive in our lives. And there is no lawlessness in a life filled with Christ. There is no need to play politics for we know who the king is. We know who the leader is. We know who is the Lord of our lives. And it's not us. It's him. So we know, you and I, know that just as much as Jesus died on the cross, and rose again and it had been promised throughout the Old Testament and was fulfilled in the new that we also know that when Jesus promised that he would come again and receive us unto himself he says I will come again and receive you unto myself that where I am there you may be also and then the promise of the angel that said, this same Jesus will come again in like manner as you have seen him go. Uh, the next time that Jesus comes, he's not going to be coming in on a donkey, but this time he's going to come through the clouds just as he was taken out, so he will come again. There is a song that says, the next time he comes, he won't have to die for me. The next time he comes, there won't be a Calvary. The next time he comes, he will be coming for you and for me. And I wonder, how will we greet him? when he comes. Just as they shouted and praised him that day and said, Hosanna, how will we welcome Jesus when he comes? Will we be waiting? Will we be watching? Will the church be alert? Will the church be awake? Will the church be here to celebrate as he comes? Even Jesus himself said, will I find any faith on the earth when I return. And I wonder today, and I want to ask each of you as you sit there at home, how will you greet him when he comes? Are you waiting? Are you ready? Have you been praising him? Are you celebrating the fact that he's coming again? You see, today was practice. It was practice grounds. Today, as we sang, as you sang in your homes, as you gathered children around you, as you gathered your loved ones around you, did you praise him? Did you sing the songs? You know, this is one time when you're at home, you don't have to act like you're in the church building. You can praise the Lord. You can shout hallelujah. You can shout hosanna. You can say amen when the preacher preaches. You can raise your hand. You can cry. You can run around your living room. You can act like you are on fire. And no one else is going to see you but your family. 
that you can praise him with everything that is in you. Our hearts should be constantly praising him. There should always be joy in our hearts. For Jesus is coming. And that, that's not just a warning. It is a coming of a king. The king who died for you. This is a celebration time for the church. We are looking forward to this Jesus. The sacrificial lamb. The one who loves us more than anyone else. He's going to return. And come and receive us unto himself. I want to ask you, are you ready? Are you prepared? Are you watching? Are you waiting? Are you excited? Let's get excited about Jesus' return. And as we celebrate his resurrection on Easter Sunday. Let's come to him in worship knowing that we live because he lives. That we have life because he has life. We have life because he has defeated sin, death, and the grave and he has delivered us from death. The scriptures tell us for the wages of sin is death but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ his son are you ready are you ready to celebrate him are you ready to celebrate him on Easter are you ready to celebrate him when he comes let's pray Dear Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for this wonderful time of worship. Lord, we may not be together as a congregation, but we can gather in our homes by one Spirit, the Holy Spirit, who resides in our hearts and our lives. It is the Spirit of God who has saved us through uh, our believing by faith in the blood of Jesus Christ that was shed for us. We know it's by your blood that we have life. And so, Lord, today we come to you and we worship together. We are the church because of you. And whether we're in our homes or whether we're all here in one place, we lift our voices right now as we pray. One voice, one spirit, and praising and serving and pleading with our one God who loves us, who created us, who sent his son to deliver us. And we come to you today as your church. We thank you that there is no virus on earth, no disease, no illness. There is nothing that can separate us or separate the church from the love of God. We are your church. And we thank you for that today. And so we praise you. I pray, dear Lord, for those who may be visiting for the first time by video. And maybe they haven't received by faith the precious gift of your son, Jesus Christ. That they have not accepted the blood that was shed for them. They haven't repented of their sins. They haven't done an about face and turned away from their sins and run headlong into your arms. But Lord, today they can. They can turn to you. And with a broken and contrite heart and spirit, they can kneel before you and cry out 
Save me. Save me. And know by faith that you saved them. You are their deliverer. You died for them. And you have reminded us and I've reminded our congregation several times, many times. John 3, 16, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And if we come to you and believe, we will be and we are saved. Thank you, dear Jesus, for what you did so long ago, but what you're also doing to this very day, delivering us, setting us free, and keeping us free from our sin. Thank you, Jesus. In your precious name we pray. Amen. We want to thank you for joining us here today. And if we are going to be celebrating throughout this Holy Week, I want to remind each of you that we will be having a Good Friday service. And we wish you could all be here, but you will be with us uh, by video in your homes. And then we're also going to worship together on Easter Sunday and receive communion together. And for all of those within our congregation, we will tell you um, and give you more um, news about that later and how we're going to do that exactly. But join us together on Easter and let's rejoice in our Lord and Savior. No one can take Easter from us. No one can take the resurrection away, for it has already happened, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ lives inside our hearts and our lives. And because he lives, we also live. Have a great week.